why walking away from a deal can make you rich. Let's talk about it. So first of all, when I say a deal, I'm talking about a business acquisition or a piece of property that you're looking to buy as a small to mid-sized business buyer or a small to mid-sized investor, right? And I'm here to tell you from firsthand experience, both in my own career, my own investments, as well as with clients I've worked with, that some of the best deals that happen, happen on the far side of walking away or be willing to walk away. I can think of a couple of specific examples where during the diligence process, and let's take a step back, right? So you find a business, we use an example of a business acquisition. You find a business, you like it, you make an offer, you negotiate, the seller and the buyer agree, right? That's a beautiful moment, everyone's excited, and then you go into diligence. Usually you'll get 30 days to inspect records, payroll records, financial documents, the whole nine yards, right? You're investigating, you're researching, you're digging into the business, and it's not unusual, those of you who have experience know, to find fleas, to find problems. Almost all businesses or almost all deals have some problem, but there's a difference between small problems versus bigger problems. Well, some deals have big problems, as I'm sure you can imagine. Some deals have big problems. But for first-time business buyers and for earlier, uh, more novice acquirers, the desire to get in the game often can be very intoxicating. And this is common for buyers when they're close to doing their first you know, deal. Maybe they have a nine to five job. They can't wait to get out of it. They have all these, you know, maybe they have doubt from their friends and family. And so when you have a deal and it's under contract and you're going through diligence and you find fleas, but you know you're close to closing, the temptation is there to say, hey, do you know what? It's not that big of a deal. I'll fix it later. I don't want to have to renegotiate. Let's just close. And so, I mean, without getting into the details of, of what can happen if you do close on something that's filled with problems, I mean, that's pretty self-evident. You can have huge problems and worst case scenario, you default on your loan or lose a ton of money. But what I've seen from firsthand experience, and this is really the point of the video, is when I've walked away and when clients I've worked with have walked away or said, hey, we're going to walk or hey, if we don't get this, we're going to walk. Usually, as a first-time buyer, you would think that in that moment, the seller is going to say, "Bye-bye, have a nice, have a nice life. Don't let, don't let the door hit you on the way out." Right? There's this fear as a buyer that we have that if we walk away or threaten to walk, we're going to get that kind of response. But if you do a good, thorough job during diligence, and this is the key, if you really investigate the deal and you find red flags and you're able to point those red flags out in a very matter of fact way and say, hey, because of you go to the seller and say, because of X, Y, and Z, we need to reduce our purchase price to this or else we're gonna walk. When you're able to point to the problems and explain why these problems are very impactful, very negative, and when you're willing to walk, Often in that moment in time, the seller will realize their business is flawed or their asset that they're selling is flawed. This is the same property that for whatever reason, there's a meaningful flaw and they will realize they being the seller, they will realize in that moment or in the coming moments that any other buyer that's going to come down the road in the future is going to see the same thing. And in that moment in time, they realize, do you know what? Why don't I just cut my losses? and make a deal because we're so close right here and now with this buyer I'm dealing with in this, in this very moment, right? If you're the buyer that finds all these problems in diligence, you're already under contract. You've already worked through all these details. You probably already have a lender that's in play. You have your equity that's potentially ready to rumble. You have your capital all but ready. The lawyer's in place, the closing attorney's in place. You know, you have a closing date probably already picked out. And then you point out these problems as a buyer and say, I will walk away if I don't get X, Y, and Z because of X, Y, and Z problems. It's very, very common for sellers to acquiesce, to massively renegotiate. And it's so much easier than you think as the buyer to impose your will and get what you want. One of the reasons why is because on top of the fact that you represent the path of least resistance for the seller, there's also the fact of temptation. See, for the, for the seller, you are so close to giving them the cash 
and the exit that they're looking for. Maybe the seller's selling because they're near retirement age. Maybe they're selling because they have a death in the family or because they have a health issue or because their kids are having problems or whatever the reasons why, right? Obviously, usually a seller is going to be motivated to sell for some set of reasons or one profound reason. And so when you're really close, they've already imagined, they being the seller, they've already visualized and imagined life after the close. It's very natural to do. Of course, you as the buyer do the same thing. You visualize what it's going to be like to quit your job and own this business or what it's going to be like to expand your portfolio and how much more cash flow it's going to bring you and how it's going to give you more lifestyle freedom. We all do it. We imagine where we're going and in the thing that we want, what it's going to be like once we get it. Sellers do this as well. So when you get really close through this diligence process and then you draw the line in the sand and say, I cannot proceed as we've agreed upon because of these newfound findings that are, that are problematic you'll be surprised at just how much leverage you have. I've seen the entire capital stack flip upside down, going from a transaction that has the better part of 80 or 90% cash at closing, going to one that has 80 or 90% seller finance. I've seen that firsthand in one of my deals, where it went from having about 80% cash at close to over 80% seller finance. Same purchase price, but literally flipped almost entirely. I've seen it firsthand. I have a client I'm working with right now, good gent, he's working really hard, has a deal that he's been working on, similar scenario, and he's finding some problems with the financials. And I've told this guy, hey, as much as I want to see you close, I want to see you close on a good deal. Don't do a deal with the devil just because you're excited to, to buy your first business. And so I gave him some instructions about how to go in there and basically say, this is what I need or else. And he was a little nervous, but I told him what to say and how to say it and all of that stuff. And we were going back and forth via text here the other night. And he was blown away that after he stated his demands because of these very clear findings that he found in diligence, that's the whole key. You can't just go in there and try to blow up the deal for no reason. You have to have reasons why. This is paramount. I can't emphasize it enough. You have to have profound reasons why that you found during diligence. Good due diligence can save you a fortune. But when you have good due diligence and you're able to list out the reasons why you need to renegotiate, at that moment in time, you basically have the seller exactly in the, in the most vulnerable place that they're going to be in, they being the seller, right? The seller is vulnerable because you have found clear reasons why the deal is overpriced. And so sure enough, now they're negotiating the details of a transaction that's vastly different than what had initially been negotiated because he found a great, he found big problems in diligence. He did a great job during his due diligence process. And I wouldn't be surprised to be closed as a completely different transaction that favors him, him being the buyer, it's going to favor him as the buyer massively. And this is the power of doing your due diligence, bringing those findings to the seller, laying it out there. And at that moment in time, the seller realizes I have these problems regardless. So do you know what? Here's this buyer right now that still wants to do a deal with me, even though I have these problems. He already knows about the skeletons in my closet. He's already going to, you know, he's still going to pay me something either now or later. And if nothing else, hey, he's going to take the business. Screw it, let's do it. They take that Richard Branson mentality of the screw it, let's do it. Deals happen like that. You'd be amazed, have the courage and have the clarity and conviction to say what you know is right, to do what's right and to protect yourself and your family. Don't sign on deals that don't make sense. It's craziness, yet a lot of people do it. And that's how bankruptcies and financial fortunes happen or financial fortunes get lost rather. That's how financial fortunes get lost. That's how bankruptcies happen. That's how dreams are destroyed by doing deals that are obviously not a good fit for you as the buyer. You I mean, by definition, deal making is doing a deal that favors you as the buyer. That doesn't mean you're trying to screw over the seller, but fair is fair. And if the seller is bringing a business with a lot of problems that they didn't tell you about in the early times, which we all know as buyers doesn't happen. It's not like most sellers don't come to you and tell you about all the problems their business has. They just tend not to. Some do, most don't. So when you find these problems that obviously weren't listed by the broker or weren't shared by the seller, then you have to use it as leverage, renegotiate, and in some cases, just walk away. I'll tell you one last thing before we end the video. I truly believe this. And those of you who have experience buying small to mid-sized businesses will, I'm sure, agree with me. There are some small to mid-sized businesses that are worth less than zero. I'm not being hyperbolic. I'm not exaggerating. They are literally worth less than zero. That's a fact. I promise you it's a fact. Because think about it like this, would you pay anything to acquire a business that's going to lose you money each year? Of course not. Why would you pay 
for something that's going to lose you money and cost you time? Of course you wouldn't. And yet, obviously, we, we understand that some businesses lose money. It's not like every business out there over, over the world, all, you know, not like every business makes money, obviously. So quite literally, some businesses have a negative value. Some businesses are worth less than zero. The seller should be paying you to acquire the business. So think about that and be mindful of that and understand that there are some deals that you just want to walk away from and there is no price that you would do the deal. That's also the case as well. This isn't just a Donald Trump art of the takeaway close, right? This isn't just an art of the deal, you know, takeaway close we're talking about. I mean, yes, there is a tactic for getting something that you want at better terms. And we're talking about that, but we're also talking about the reality, which is some deals just aren't worth it, irrespective of the price and that you should run away from them and never look back. All right. With that being said, Go to Jason Paul Rogers for more information about how to buy businesses. Go to brighterutilities.com if you'd like to invest with me in one of my plumbing or HVAC deals. You can follow me on social media at Jason Paul Rogers on almost all the platforms, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.